This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's jump into it. Um, on March 21st, we saw WCW and New Japan do a super show where Fujinami defeated Ric Flair to win the world title. <clears throat> Fujinami was already the IWGP world champion, so this made him the first man to hold both world titles at the same time. Pretty controversial finish uh, and, and maybe a little convoluted. How did you understand the finish? Did you ever personally consider Fujinami the WCW world champion? It is a little confusing. Yeah, well, it just didn't get over. That's what you're saying. I think yeah. you're saying it didn't get over. Uh, you know, it was one of those deals where you, everybody kept looking and looking and looking for the out. Well, we got to take care of Nate. Uh, you know, Nate didn't really need anybody to take care of it. You know, if you just let this stuff to, to Nate and said, hey, Rick, we want to put the belt for a short term on Fujinami uh, as it would help us create a better working relationship with New Japan. It gives you more quality guys to work with as we go forward. But to launch this relationship, we want to put him over in Tokyo. And can you come? I want, we'd like for you to come up with how you want to do it. That's what I'd have done. I don't know if that was done or not. Uh, but that you just tell Nate what you wanted and let him craft his own, uh, his own match. I mean, my God, he's at that time he was, and, and for many times before and after, by the way, he was the best worker in the business. So could you not trust the best worker in the business to come up with a finish that it serves everyone's needs? <laughs> I always believe that we overthought that thing immensely. I always believe that Fujinami should have won with his finish. Period. Oh my God, you can't do that. Jesus Christ. That hell, that's Ric Flair. You got to have an out. Yeah, you got out Russell one night, and, lost, and for three seconds, the other guy was better. And count on your announcers, i.e., yours truly and, and Tony Schiavone, to tell the story and protect our guy, which we would have done. So I just thought it was a well overthought. You know, we've got to have an out. we got to have a screw job. we got, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not big on the screw job shit. It's just runs course. Too many people know what's going on. And now we try to fool them by doing a hokey ass, uh, you know, screw job and tie. I don't, I don't, you know, Conrad, I'll be honest with you. I didn't go back and watch this show cause I don't like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you, Jim. Well, here's the thing that was well, going to be honest, rocking, talking bullshit people. You know, I don't, they don't tune into us for, for you and me to lie to them. No. Bullshit them. There's plenty of podcasts to do that. The revisionist history and all that stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you how I felt about it. The, the event under delivered, we're going to explain exactly why under delivered as we go through the show. And then it will become obvious to most people that are objective and would rather be objective than just be uh, defiant. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'd let Flair should have come up with the finish. He's the champion and he's doing the honors. Why would you want anybody else to help put it together? And I think other people were involved in it. So now you're just trying to c come up with a finish that becomes a watered down version of what you really wanted it to be so that you can keep Rick happy. And, and I don't think that's the way you keep Rick happy when he got his way. Is that what he was looking for to get his way? Or was he looking to do good business and the right business? I think the latter. What I'm excited about, uh, on this show is, is my fandom as a kid, you know, I, I this probably doesn't hold up, but as a kid, man, there was so much great stuff on this one match in particular. Uh, before we talk about that, though, I do want to talk about uh, this New Japan relationship. It's more than just the main event, which is a little confusing. And it, it, maybe you don't recall, but the idea is Fujinami won the belt on March 21st, but Ric Flair took it back to America and nobody really knew why. And the office was just like, just don't worry about it. So. I guess we can't really worry about it because we don't really understand. Well, it if the either. office doesn't give a shit enough to worry about it, then why should we? Yeah. Right. I agree. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what I can understand the belt coming back. If he was not, if Sweet Johnny was not going to defend the title and apparently that was part of the deal, he didn't need to have the belt over there. So I think that for security purposes, 
that the w the wcw did not want uh their belt to be in japan with the champion because he wasn't going to defend it and they want to control the belt it got to become a lot of politics and you know you know a little bit of skullduggery and 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 you know the art of the work protecting your investment you know everything was amplified and all it was everybody involved became looking like dumbasses quite frankly because we're we're overprotective we're we're coming up with excuses i don't know man i just it it just uh was it was the foundation for this program was poorly conceived and i think it uh the result of this match that we're talking about here today, uh, will will testify to that. Time for some more of that. Our main event, Ric Flair pins Tatsumi Fujinami in 1836 to retain the WCW title in a rare battle of world champions. Meltzer would say live. This was a lot better than in Tokyo. Some have told me on top. They didn't think this was as good, uh, but it was just a stiff, excellent, well-paced match up until the finish. Flair was really alive for this one and sold Fujinami submission so well that the match had surprising. Flair was the crowd favorite, but Fujinami's reaction wasn't too bad. And he did all the crowd with the bow and arrow move, which kind of got everyone into thinking he was something special. Flair bled after being run into the guardrail. They missed the bridging spot and the finish saw Hattori get bumped. And immediately Flair got Fujinami from behind with a cradle using the trunks and Alfonso jumps in and counts the pin. Everyone was mad about the finish, which was the design reaction. The idea was they want to make everyone mad that Flair was leaving the ring. Uh, since Flair was going to be the crowd favorite, since they didn't really even try to get Fujinami over, they needed a finish that would make everyone mad. At least that's the psychology behind it. The problem is, and the years long trend of diminishing house show crowds bear this out is the days fans don't get mad at the heel for the screw job finish. They get mad at the promotion, which is a fine way to end a pay-per-view card three and three quarter stars. What'd you think? Did we outsmart ourselves on the finish? Yeah, without a doubt. And, and Fujinami, I don't believe, uh, and uh, your father-in-law could probably say, speak to this better than I, uh, obviously. I don't think Fujinami would have had any issues with all returning the favor. I don't think with all the tight pulling and all the screw jobs and all that shit, you got two of the greatest in-ring performers of their generation. And you're telling me this is the best we could come up with a bill Alfonso involved, um, Masahiro Tori getting, uh, bumped. It sounded like an old school pro wrestling finish that you would use if you're working a return. And by the way, Conrad, was there a return match? I don't, I don't remember one. Do you? That's it. And they're both being booked. Like it's going to be, you're in the weekly town. Yeah. And it was the wrong psychology. So Rick should have done the honors in Tokyo for the triumph at Tatsumi Fujinami gets his hand raised and wins this wonderful NWA title. Uh, or WCW title, whatever it was at that point. Uh, and that's another thing that was kind of stupid. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it just didn't make any sense. We, we, uh, the whole thing was out thought overthought in my opinion, you could have great matches because this could have been a match where the world could have been talking, still talking about in a much more positive, different way, Conrad, in my opinion, but instead what we're focusing on are the, are the tights. So I guess the answer to that whole thing is they should just wrestle naked. The March 21st show over in Tokyo got three and a half stars in the observer. This one gets three and three quarter stars. So Meltzer liked it better. He even laid that out uh, of the finish Meltzer wrote dusty roads. Didn't come up with the flare finish apparently, which is why both he and Jim Ross never acknowledged the trunks being used in commentary. Dusty should have at least specified on ref, uh, specified one ref bump since they already had two others on the card. Bingo. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ref bump. Whatever. Uh, too many gimmicks, too many screw job finishes, but a lot of talent. That feels like the story of WCW in 1991. It sure does. And it, uh, it led to the exit of a lot of folks. People were ready to leave. We saw no, you know, personally, you know, it's just frustrating when you're out there calling the match and you want to do the best job that you can. And you want the fans to enjoy your work. 
that was always my goal to get talent over and enjoy what we're, what they're hearing. But boy, some of this booking was, it took the air out of one sales. And, uh, this show just was, was that way. It was just, it was, it was a funky booked show. Uh, it might even be called wonky, wonky Conrad. I got corrected so many times on Twitter about me making fun of the word wonky. I wasn't making fun of the word wonky kids. I was making it about its overuse. That's all. And at the end of the day, does it make a shit? Not a damn bit. Wonky your ass off. Like the other t-shirt. I'm walking the floor over you. So, or anyway, I wouldn't sell shit there. But nonetheless, all good. But I, I just thought it was a uh, poorly booked, uh, and some of the execution, the talent was overachieved. You know, we talked about the Freebirds match, overachieving. I thought it was great. Uh, Steiner's match, excellent. Uh, it might be Arn and, Arn and Bobby, but uh, and, there, and so it wasn't. A, it wasn't the. It wasn't a total disaster, but the show could have been a whole hell of a lot better. It was overbooked. There's things on the show that didn't need to be on the show. <clears throat> you know, the, the introduction of, of Johnny B. Bad, lukewarm, uh, the dancing, the, the, the pissing bears. Really? What are we thinking? But this, you can see how hard the management wanted WCW to resemble what they perceived as a WWE WWF esque presentation. And that was because the upper management above heard thought that the only way to do wrestling was to do it Vince McMahon style. It works for Vince McMahon, but again, we should have been doing our own thing. Yeah. And cr creating a different image, a different style. And all that would have had to be was just go back to fundamental things and have uh, clearly defined heroes and villains. And here's why they're fighting and let the fans help book it. And it's just, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hate the show, hate, hate, but I would say if I had to give my thumbs somewhere other than up my ass, it would be thumbs in the middle. Yeah. There's the, something, uh, some things on there were so good. I, I couldn't give the show a, a thumbs down. But uh, I thought the show could have been a whole lot better if the, if the booking had been more thought out. And we had tried to introduce so many new things. What sticks in that show? What, here, let me ask you this question. As a very learned fan, a very intelligent man, what things stick out on that show to you? It'll always be to me about the Steiners stinging legs. Whenever no. I think of this show, that's what I think of. And I think the readers of The Observer agree uh, that won the best match poll. The worst match poll, they agreed with us, Elegante and Sid Vicious. Overall, though, the show got 59.6% thumbs up. I'm in that category. 25.5% uh, were thumbs down. I thought you would have been there, but instead you said you were amongst the other 14.9%. Thumbs in the middle. So, hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.